in the meantime, August, do you think we can show off the Scratch template? Uh, sure. Let's see. Scratch or Brush Maze? Well, Whichever maybe, one. Oh, should we ask the chat? What do you guys want? <laughs> they basically use the same pieces. Um, so they're very similar. The Brush Maze is maybe a little more top level simple. So maybe I'll just show that. Uh, so you might notice this draw on touch subgraph. And uh, I was actually the developer that worked on this. And no, I didn't actually even make this. You can add this to any project if you add a 2D screen image to your project. And then on that screen image, you click Add Interaction. Uh, so when you click Add Interaction, it'll use this current object that you're selecting in a subgraph. Um, so this one, you can go down to Screen Touch, and you can go to Draw on Touch. And that will create this subgraph with the screen image attached. And what it does is really it'll it'll use um, a node that we have called 2D Brush, and it'll wire up a bunch of extra stuff so that you can control brush texture and material color and all of that stuff in one place. So I'll just show you a different way, 2D Brush. Just search 2D Brush in the nodes, and then you'll get access to the actual node. So these are really the two ways to add a 2D Brush to your project. Whenever I added the interaction, it'll create this one. And right away, without changing anything, uh, you'll see it drawing on the screen like this. Without whatever your settings are. Notice I made it yellow. I click override brush material settings. Brush size is very small. But with the 2D brush, you have a little bit more control. So I would say draw on touch is the best for very simple things and for beginner users who don't really care too much to customize. And then if you need to customize, you can set up your own draw on touch subgraph using this. And this will allow you to use a custom brush material. Now, let me show you just some quick little thing. So let's add the uh, portrait segmentation, right? And we've got uh, we've got this strapping model in our preview panel, and we can use the touch to uh, draw. So on start, we say brush on. On stop, we say brush off. That's just when you start touching, you start drawing. And when you lift your finger back up, you stop. Clear canvas. Uh, you might want to clear canvas when the video starts recording. When the user records, if you want to clear the canvas and have them start over and draw something new, that's very common. That's how you would do that. Or if you want to add a screen image tap to like some sort of reset button, you can add the reset button, add screen image tap, clear canvas. And that it's always nice when somebody can just do some action to reset their drawing instead of turning the effect off and on. That's huge way more likely that somebody will post a video with your effect if they can easily reiterate. I, I highly suggest playing with that. This and is like great. Uh, sometimes like if you, if you want to redo something, you got to like turn off and on your effect that like really makes it um, less likely that creators are going to post your effect. You have to think about like when people turn it off and on, it's also adding the, a different music track on as well. So if they wanted to talk while they're doing it, they have to remove the music as well. So yeah, there's a lot of little things. So this is one cool thing that I saw somebody do. I'm adding that, I'm adding this, what is it called? The background texture to an unlit material. I created a brand new unlit. I'm adding that background texture to it, right? And so it's just this purple, pink, blue texture in an unlit material. And then I put that into this 2D brush, this right here. And then the brush position is going to be set to current position. So that's your touch position, right? So basically with this, everything is set up. You can change the brush size if you want. You can make it rotate. But uh, this canvas output 2D, OK, so that is the last thing we need. <laughs> I'll add a 2D screen image here, and I'll just move it here. And this will be our canvas. So you always need a canvas. And the canvas is just some 2D screen image. So you see right here, it's a default texture. Well, 
we're going to change that texture to our brush canvas by doing this. And then we notice this needs to be triggered. So we'll just add a start. And we only have to do it one time at the beginning to set this to our brush canvas. And now it's our brush canvas. Now when we touch, we'll see that texture that the brush is drawing to. So as you can see, this is much, this is a little bit more complex than the draw and touch subgraph that's automatically created. But look at this cool brush I'm making. <laughs> it's square, sorry. So in your unlit, you're going to want to go to render state. And we've done this a couple times today, but change it to normal so that it uh, is transparent and circular. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm trying to think density. Well, okay, no, this is the one that's better to do in the draw on touch. Sorry. There's plenty of cool things you can do with the brush material. I'll show you the, here, here, let's just do the other one real quick. So you know how we have this yellow one? This is our other canvas, by the way. Notice I turned off the top one and now I'm using this draw on touch, which is accessing this draw prompt or this uh, brush canvas object right here. Uh, so if we change this texture to the background texture, and then we enable texture, it's yellow, so it's weird, but, but notice how the, let me increase the size so you can see, it looks pretty cool. It's almost like the uh, change in colors is giving it kind of a 3D look because it looks like shadows and highlights. And this is literally just by changing the texture of the brush. So I think people should experiment and they'll come up with all kinds of crazy awesome brushes and then if you want to get really crazy and you want to make for instance a custom material that changes as you paint <gasps> you can create a custom material and put it in the 2d brush setup that i have on the left <clears throat> otherwise if you don't need anything custom or crazy you can use the draw and touch and you can just customize it within these settings here and you can make so many cool things that is awesome oh one other thing to I wanted to talk about that I think I think uh, is a little deeper, but very, very important to know if you if you want to make a lot of brush stuff. This interpolate density, this is how many times it's drawing the brush in between each stroke. So if you have a very small brush and you brush very quickly across the screen, it might only stroke on the screen three times. So you have to have a very high density to paint all of the in-between strokes. Um, if you have a very big brush, then you probably won't notice when it goes very low. So this is set to 50 because the brush was very small. The maximum is 100. Just keep in mind that the effect will run, the performance will be uh, changed by this. So if you set it to 100, you're going to render 100 brush strokes every frame. So just only keep this as high as you need it. Cha maybe change it until it looks good. Test it out. Like this one might be able to be five. It still looks pretty good at five. But even now you can see, if I brush really fast, you can see how many strokes are in between. Um, so I would just play with it until it looks how you like it. And if you need to get rid of those in between marks, just adjust interpolate density. Can that ink be passed to render target for recursive effect using Material Editor? Oh, yeah. You, anytime you want to capture something and send it back to a Material Editor, you always want to just use a render texture. So this canvas that we're seeing right now, this brush canvas, that's where our paintbrush is going. And it's being captured by this camera, 2D camera. So because it's being captured by this camera, the reason that we're seeing it is because it's going to final render out. That's basically what we see in the preview window. So if you wanted it to go somewhere else, you would just create a tender texture and the assets panel, and you would use that render capture texture to capture it instead. So we switch to render texture instead of final render out. Now we'll no longer see any of that stuff, but it's still being, it's still happening. I just drew on the screen for instance, and then we'll create a new screen image. Actually, let's see. I just want to create a whole new camera and then we will just, we don't need any of these and this camera will go to final render out. And so that's the one we'll see. And so all it is is this draw prompt right now, but instead of the draw prompt, we would create a custom material and that custom material 
would be assigned here. Empty material is the one we just created. And then because I didn't add anything to it, it just renders like a white square. But um, if we would just want to do a simple thing, just sample the texture, sample our render texture, right? And then for this one, I would choose texture coordinate so that it renders the same as it did before. You could also use screen coordinates if you want it to be more of a mask. And then just straight color to shader. And then you can see if we if we stretch it to full screen, like all of the other render textures are, and then we set it to stretch, we will see that we get our brush back. And in between, now we can do whatever we want with that. If we don't just want to straight up draw it, we can, uh, this is in this custom materials where we can use it to do other things, to mask, to do all kinds of stuff. Hope that was straightforward. That was a lot of steps. <laughs> Thank you for the advice.